Capcom is going so overboard on its bizarre anti-modding crusade. Uh, this is maybe just a recap of what we already knew. Capcom's crusade against modders seems to be doing more harm than good for its reputation. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes in the world of video game news, you read a story that's so nonsensical, you assume that there must be some crucial context missing. The current situation with Capcom and the Enigma Protector is one of those stories, but the more I dig into it, the more I realize it is every bit as bizarre as it sounds. For reasons beyond all reason, Capcom is on a crusade to excise mods from its games, and the collateral damage of that pointless war is starting to have some strange effects. Here are the facts as I understand them. Last October, Capcom published a YouTube video called RE2023 Anti-Cheat and Anti-Piracy Measure in PC Games Recommendations for In-House Productions. The video, which was produced as part of the company's open conference for game industry professionals, is a 50-minute presentation that covers the current state of cheating and piracy in PC gaming. Capcom's approach to anti-cheat and piracy measures and its philosophy about tamper resistance, i.e. controlling mods. Part of the presentation that pertains to mods starting at 1353 claims that they are, uh, they are no different than cheats in terms of how they affect a game and that for the purpose of anti-cheat and anti-piracy, all mods are defined as cheats. We... I remember us con uh, covering this whenever this came out. The presenter explains that while the majority of mods positively impact games, malicious mods can be detrimental to the uh, reputation of the company. A lot of this came about because of the nude Chun-Li issue. If you don't remember, there was a competitive uh, Street Fighter tournament happening, and uh, one of the presenters or announcers... Um, was also playing in the match or something like that. They uh, forgot they had a mod running on their system. It was a nude Chun-Li mod. And uh, for a moment, whenever they started playing, um, Chun-Li appeared on the screen fully nude, which threw Capcom into this... Um, huge debacle of uh, having to address the situation and it does feel like they went way overboard with it um so malicious mods can be detrimental to the reputation of the company either because they can be mistaken for legitimate implementations in the game or because the content of the mod itself hurts the brand unacceptable <laughs> what's up reagan uh, I can understand this, right? I mean, from a business perspective, you have to respect what this is and what this means to a company, right? There are a number of mods that are offensive to public order and morals. The presenter explains when these are disseminated, the image of the product is tarnished and branding is affected. Most of us are going to understand that if you're watching a Street Fighter game and a character ends up, you know, looking... For instance in the nude you know you know that that's not something capcom did <laughs> you know I mean? but there's always the potential that somebody is not going to be familiar with the game um they're going to be watching the content see that and it, you know the the blame is going to fall on the developer and publisher which is capcom right so you have to see where they're coming from a little bit there what does Capcom mean by the mods are offensive to the public order and morals? Many haven't drawn a connection between this presentation and a Street Fighter tournament last July. That was interrupted when a fully nude Chun-Li appeared at the start of the match, like I said. Given the ferocity with which Capcom is targeting modders today, it feels like that incident offers important context. A couple of months after the presentation, Capcom started aggressively targeting Monster Hunter YouTube videos that featured mods. The takedown requests uh, disproportionately affect Monster Hunter speedrunners who use mods to add consistency to the game including one that removes random spawn points. Capcom has been known to issue copyright strikes against YouTube videos that feature mods in the past too. Like this example of a YouTuber whose Resident Evil 3 video was DMCA'd for showcasing a modded outfit, but this more recent example, along with the RE23 presentation of Chun-Li incident, establishes a trend. Capcom is going on the offensive against modders. Yeah. Recently, the company has started adding DRM software called Enigma Protector to its games, including Mega Man Zero, ZX Legacy Collection, uh, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, and Ghost Trick Phantom Detective after removing Denuvo DRM from it just last month. This software could be used like Denuvo to counter piracy, but given the age of the games, it's pretty obviously, uh, obvious it's the other thing. The software locks the game's uh, ex executable file, which is called the .exe file, for those that don't know, which prevents it from being edited by mods. 
Unfortunately, there are claims that the updates are making some of these games incompatible with the Steam Deck. But hey, this is about protecting Capcom's reputation, right? Though making games unplayable to shut down naughty mods isn't exactly what I'd consider good for the brand. GamesRadar found a thread on Enigma support forums where angry players were expressing their dissatisfaction with the new software implementation, to which a site admin responded, Yeah, we read this. We read this. Maybe you are so angered because you can't use cheats anymore. That exchange has been deleted, and the Resident Evil Revelations update that made it unplayable on Steam Deck has been reverted. But Capcom is planning to re-release the update, and other games that have recently updated with Enigma Protector have not had those updates removed. I don't think Capcom cares about people using mods to cheat in Resident Evil Revelation. That's just my intuition. Going after YouTubers for using innocuous mods that make speedrunning Monster Hunter viable does not seem a lucrative use of Capcom's resources either. Nor do I think cheating in a single player game is a big issue that Capcom believes it needs to clamp down on. Yeah, who cares if anybody's cheating in a single player game? The multiplayer competitive live service types of games, that's where the cheating is unacceptable, right? If people were cheating in Street Fighter tournaments, that would be a different story. Exactly. But there's been no reports of mods being used for that. Just the nude Chun-Li thing. What gets me about the whole offensive public uh, to public order and morals, morals thing, which is what I believe this entire crusade against mods boils down to, is that Capcom is acting like it hasn't been selling sex for years. Right, that's true. How can a nude Chun-Li be the end of the world and do irrevocable damage to Capcom's reputation when the Street Fighter swimsuit special exists? Yeah, half of Capcom's franchise are built on the exploitation of women's bodies. Capcom is corrupting its own games with shoddy DRM software to fight indecency, while simultaneously tweeting thirst traps of Dragon's Dogma 2 monsters with sexually suggestive captions. True. Cares so much about eliminating content that offensive to public order and morals, but if I showed a picture of Morrigan to your conservative grandmother, her head would explode. <laughs> does Capcom care about obscene depictions of its characters, or does it just care about having a monopoly on creating obscene images of its characters? Yeah. Between hurting the speedrunning community and making games unplayable on Steam Deck... There's already been enough collateral damage from this foolish war on mods to prove Capcom needs to back down. Even in its presentation, it acknowledged that the majority of mods impact games positively, so why make this such a big deal? Surely the backlash to the DMCA strikes and Enigma software do more damage to the brand than a random nude, nude Chun-Li everyone knew was a mod. It's the responsibility of the platforms that the host uh, the mods the responsibility of the platforms that host the mods to moderate them and ensure harmful and hateful content isn't being disseminated. And Capcom needs to back off and trust that process or only get involved when there's a mod that crosses the line. This scorched earth approach to mods is only going to hurt its customers in the long run. It's, it's, it's a slippery slope, it really is. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll address this. Working on a, a, a mod for stream. <laughs> Yo, that's funny, dude. Yo, did the sad face pop off? Sorry, I was I was focus mode on reading that. Uh, hacker man, he's the most powerful right. hacker that's of all right. time. My opinion of them going against modders is going to, uh, isn't going to end well for Capcom. I agree, Ferret. I agree. Look, I mean, I think we we talk about this a lot, right? Uh, with an assist mode. Couldn't even change the difficulty settings in Resident Evil 2 and 3. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's always one of those things, Reagan. I'll, I'll address that real quick before we talk about this mod stuff. But the... Uh, I didn't know that those games didn't have difficulty settings. Um... That's that's a tough thing to address, you know. I, I I'm I'm a bit biased as I play difficult games all the time. I play games on the hardest difficulty all the times, so I'm usually on the opposite side of that coin. Whenever I play a game that feels too soft, it pisses me off. You know what I mean? Um, so, it, it, but I I agree. I think that the best thing to do is to have options for people. You know, give people the option. But I also understand like when it. I think part of it is is art, right? Part of it's looked at as art. When you talk to developers like from software, from from software, and I think that's probably 
part of the reason why Resident Evil doesn't put difficulty settings into games like Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, stuff like that. I don't think those games had difficulty settings originally. So they try to stick fairly close to what the games were originally. But it is a modern take on a retro game, right? So it doesn't mean that they couldn't change that either. Now, From Software is very adamant about the fact that they don't put difficulty settings in their games because this is the art form that they're trying to create, and they don't want people messing with that process. So they make the games difficult on purpose. They understand that not everybody is going to enjoy that experience because the games are very difficult, but that's the way that they want the game to be experienced, and they don't want it altered, right? So to an extent, I, I understand that, you know, and... Um, it's, it's been an area of contention and debate for a long time for us now in the video gaming industry as far as consumers and players, enthusiasts, to um, as to whether should every game have, you know, difficulty settings for accessibility. Uh, some people just like to enjoy a game for what it is and the experience and the immersion, not the difficulty. Some people, more like me, really enjoy a tough difficulty. You know, it's it's a hard thing to really address all, all the way around, you know. Um, so it, it's tough. It really is. It's a hard thing to address. Now, on the front of the mod stuff, dude, I think that, you know, and I was just talking about this the other day, actually. Mods as a whole, the modding community, they do work dude modding community is is doing amazing stuff all the time are they always doing some wild stuff too like making characters nude you know <laughs> yeah yeah there's always the potential for some really wild stuff or to you know take a, a game like you know maybe choo choo charles and turn the train into something that looks adorable and cute that's chasing you down you know what i mean there, there's wild mod stuff like that all the time but there's also a lot of fantastic stuff that uh the modding community is doing all the time for video games for quality of life performance improvements taking up the ball where a lot of developers drop that ball you know and um fixing games so that they're actually playable because the devs suck and they don't want to um continue to work on a game that needs to be fixed or finished you know the mod mod uh, modding community does uh great things all the time and, and i think that you know when you go back and look at this last article or this last paragraph it, you're talking about you know um where was this at a random chun nude chun lee everyone knew was a mod like i said previously i kind of addressed this when we were at the beginning of this article most people are going to understand that if you saw Chun-Li in a Street Fighter game nude, you know that's not Capcom that did that, you know? But there's always the chance, right? There's always the chance that um, there's going to be somebody not familiar with the game and they're going to be like, oh, wow, that's pretty lewd, you know what I mean, for a, a developer to be doing in their game and just pushing out there or whatever. And uh, I think another part of it is probably, you know, there's always that, you know, like they touched on here as well. Dude, Street Fighter has, has I mean, made through each next iteration of their game, you know, characters have gotten more and more skimpy. You know what I mean? Like the the females in the game uh, wear, wear more and more skimpy clothing. They're, they're more, you know, just anime if you will <laughs> you know what i mean basically like a a negative waist size with huge busts and you know d giant asses and stuff you know i mean it's it, they they they've it's not like they they don't do this themselves also i mean that's a it's a very good point i think that the difference there there is a line between you know a fully nude character and one that's scantily clothed uh, you know clothed though as well there's going to be the uh i think from a business perspective you you have to understand that yeah uh, most of us are going to get the fact that you know there's not much difference there right but from a business perspective it's kind of saving face a little bit we've talked about this to an extent you know 
Um, Street Fighter is, um, you know, there's always the potential for uh, a younger audience to maybe be watching and stuff like that. And, and while, you know, it should be rated appropriately too, it's a violent game. It's all about fighting and stuff like that. It does uh, show a lot of uh, body <laughs> quite often. You know, I don't know. I don't even know what what is Street Fighter uh, Six rated. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's T for Teen, dude. It's T for Teen for real. T for Teen. Um, they probably address it right here on ESRB as well. Let's see this. Uh, The game contains some suggestive material. Female characters designed in revealing outfits, thongs, deep cleavage, partially exposed buttocks, chests covered by narrow bands. Right? So should it be a big surprise to anybody that actually looks at... Some characters' breasts jiggle during matches. (laughs) Jiggle physics, dude. Camera angles sometimes highlight various body parts. One character fights in a drunken boxing style, which, which depicts him drinking alcohol from a gourd, gourd stumbling, and red-faced. You know, I mean, so so when, when you you look at even what ESRB, you know, like pushes. Yo, sight, go again, dog. That's not gonna work. Come on, man. <laughs> yo, you guys can win on either uh, the uh, patch face or Pico Mouse, dude. Nice, dude. <laughs> it's the baguette revolution, dude. Nice. What were you saying up there, dude? What did you say? Just wonder if one day they'll make some big game with a dude that's got a leather thong on with his junk swing around. Well, yeah. I mean, we. I mean, how many games? I mean, even in, <laughs> bro. You know, there, there, there's already a ton of games that show nudity and stuff. You know, it's like, dude, BG3 shows a bunch of nudity. You know, uh. But if you're talking about, like, fighting games and stuff, probably, you know, probably so. Where it's like, that's all there is, just like a little bitty, like, loincloth. And every time the character moves, you just see, like, the loincloth, like, flopping around, you know? <laughs> probably. I mean, so, so it, should it be, like, a, a big, uh, like, wow, dude, there's a nude character? You know what I mean? Because... This is already stuff that people should be aware of. Like the, the uh, w- you know, it's very provocative, right? It's very, it's it's a very risque uh, kind of situation with the way a lot of these characters are, are depicted in the game and everything. So should, should Capcom be freaking out over the fact that one of their characters was also depicted nude through a mod? Probably not, you know? From a business standpoint, I get it a little bit. I understand a little bit, but... It's not like they don't do this to themselves. It's not like they didn't actually kind of promote this to be the case in the first place, right? To be fair, if their characters weren't already depicted in this way, there probably wouldn't be as much want for these kinds of mods to show them nude and stuff. It would probably still happen. You know, (laughs) because the modding community is the modding community. But, you know... It, it, it's this is the world we live in, man. You know, they they they've kind of brought this upon themselves. I I all agree with that. And uh, to to totally shut modders off from their games, that's that's going to be much more detrimental to them in the long run, I think, than you know somebody maybe seeing a new Chun Li every once in a while. Sorry. Pretty uh, seems pretty uh, short-sighted to me from uh, as far as Capcom's concerned.